Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 699, and today I am fired up because I have a special guest on, someone that I think is so cool, and I think you're going to really, really enjoy her as well. Someone that I met recently, actually over the past 12 months, part of our uh, Accelerator Mastermind with Pat Flynn, and her name is Jada Selner. Now, if you don't know who she is, well, get ready, because she is going to, uh, well, she's going to explain the method that she has used to help create 350,000 emails in one business and a huge social media following, and then also why she walked away from it. Why would you do that? Well, we're going to learn that. But really what I want you guys to understand is that Jada is going to break that down and she's going to give you all kinds of, of nuggets of wisdom and of gold and you're going to want to pay attention here because sometimes you think once I get to this certain place, that's where I need to be. That's where I'm going to, to live, right? Well, then you show up there and there's something inside of you that's saying like, I don't know, I, I feel like I got to... I got to change direction, and uh, actually, myself and Jada have a lot in common, and uh, that's why I'm really excited to have her on as well. When we uh, when we were in person together, we just shared a lot of the same feelings and just very similar journey, to be honest with you, but uh, what you're going to take away, I guarantee, is that uh, you can go out there and create something from scratch, but... You also need to understand that there are going to be moments and pivots along the way, all right? So with all of that being said, because this is a great conversation and I don't want to take up any more of the time on this podcast with me rambling, I want to get right to it. So guys, sit back, relax, enjoy this conversation that I had with my good friend, Jada Selner. Well, hey, Jada, what's up? Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Finally, how you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm super excited, Scott, to to be here and just have this conversation with you. I know we've had a lot of behind the scenes conversations oh, yeah. in San Diego. Oh, and- yeah. <laughs> no, it's been it's been awesome just to get to know you better. And you know, I've seen what you've done in the past in in the businesses that you've grown and and just you as a person and, and growing and then being able to hang out with you. Um, we're, we're part of Pat's Accelerator Program, which is a mastermind in a sense. And we've really gotten to know each other and we have a lot in common. Uh, I know. <laughs> you know, we really do. And, and it's pretty cool because we both really want the same thing. We just want to do what feels right. But getting to where we are wasn't necessarily the course we would have, I guess, planned. It's just kind of happens, right? And then you kind of just, you, you kind of follow it. But what I did want to talk about a couple different areas, but the one thing that I think you could help uh, our audience is with community and, and really just how to go out there and find the right people. And from there, how to deliver value to those people, and then eventually have them, you know, buy something from you without it being like salesy and over the top, like hard hardcore uh, pressure or any of that stuff. And I know you've, you've done Ted talks on this. I mean, you've, you've done some talking on this topic, so I know that you're going to, you're going to be able to help us. So where, where do we start with this? Yeah. So I, I love that you talked about that. And I think what would be super helpful for, for people to understand is I, I co-founded a company with my friend and business partner, Jen Hansard, which I've since sold my half of the company and exited, which we have a lot of just commonality in those transitions and piv- pivots in building businesses. Mm. But one of my superpowers is community building. And what I was able to do with Simple Green Smoothies, we started an Instagram account in 2012. And in my time there, grew that Instagram community to over 400,000 followers, Crazy. Uh, over 300,000 Facebook fans. And my favorite part is that we leverage social media to grow our email list. So we actually had over 355,000 email subscribers. And this was without any paid advertising, uh, affiliates, you know, guest posting. It was really about showing up, being consistent and adding value. And one of the things that I always say is to show your dance moves on the dance floor. And what I mean by that is really thinking about if you were in a club, in a dance club, (laughs) and and someone came up to you and was like, hey, do you want to see my dance moves? And you're like, sure. Um, And he's like, great. Well, you're going to have to come to my house 
to see me dance. And it's, <laughs> that's a little bit creepy. So yeah, you bit. actually want to add the value, show your dance moves, build the trust on the actual dance floor where people are hanging out. And the mistake that I made, the mistake that I see many people make is they get so excited about their website, about their offer, that they pull people off of the dance floor, the social media platform where they're spending time on uh, too quickly. And so what I say is just to add, create value where your people are hanging out. And then you can invite them to your website, which I like to look at as like your home that's your home base. That's what and we then, call it. Yes. And yep. then when you invite someone, you know, to your email list, that's like your bedroom where you're having private conversations with people. So an example with simple green smoothies, I remember we would post green smoothie photos on the Instagram account and we would say, you know, go, you know, click the link in bio to get the full recipe. So we were kind of teasing them and they're like, why won't you just share the recipe with us right here? And so I saw that coming up over and over again. And I was like, what if we just actually posted a beautiful photo of the green smoothie and also included the full recipe so that people could take action, mm. um, just like your take action effect. That's right, that's right. <laughs> to actually take action. And from that, they're able to get that small win, build confidence in themselves and build trust in you at the same time. And so when people are thinking about you know, how to add value, do it on the dance floor that your people are hanging out you know, really add that value before you ask them for anything. I love something that Talking Moore says. He says to give in public and ask in private. Mm. Yeah, no, that's huge. And, you know, I, I've been following that model for a very long time. Social media um, has come out after the fact when I got started. Um, I was building an email list through like Outlook Express you know, like, <laughs> and sending like only a hundred at a time because you'd get flagged or something, you know? So I was, and that was like a brick and mortar business. But now with social, like you said, you can get the attention and then you can guide the attention over to more intimate settings or, in, or like you said, to your, to your house. Like you're going to invite people over to, have a barbecue or whatever. Right. Um, but I know there's going to be some people saying, well, okay, that's great and all. And, and whenever you did this, it was easier than it is now. What would you say to that person? Because, you know, Facebook's always regulating, like how, you know, or they're throttling, like how much reach you get. And you have this group that's got, you know, 300,000 people in it. How many people actually see it? Facebook fan page versus a community of a group. What would you say to that? Yeah. So I will say there's one thing that worked then that still works today. Okay, um, cool. there's, a, there's a couple of things. One, focusing on creating quality content versus quantity. Mm. So I see people who have way more comments in their post, way more likes and shares when someone actually spaces out their content and not mm. necessarily needing to post daily on Instagram or daily on Facebook, you know, just posting for the sake of posting for all the algorithm's sake. Mm. Um, because that people know. It's just like, oh, this is just kind of regurgitated content versus really adding content where people can learn from you. Mm. Um, I learned this from my friend Clay Hebert and Angie Lee, and they talked about look at me content versus learn from me content. Mm. So I'd rather you create content where you are actually adding value again, where someone can get that small win or they're learning something from you that they can take action on mm -hmm. versus like, just look at me. Hey, I'm in Puerto Rico, right? I just said I was mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico and being able to add that value from that place versus trying to add a lot more noise to the marketplace. And for Simple Green Smoothies, we, didn't, we only posted two to three times a week. Oh, wow. uh, and I see the same thing. Like I study, you know, other Instagram accounts and the ones that are actually have more engagement are the people that post less, but post more valuable content that people are actually getting something from. So I'd rather you spend more time on preparing that content than just making as much noise as possible to like, look at me, look at me, look at me. I'd rather you have that that content where people are actually going to learn from you in some way, something either that they didn't know before or that they can take action on. Mm -hmm. Another thing um, is doing a power hour. So don't ghost or don't post and then ghost. So uh, 
you know, on social media, they're recognizing who's actually present and having a conversation versus you just posting and then leaving and going on about your day. But if you're saying you want to build a community online, you actually have to have conversations with people online. So when you post, even if it's a scheduled post that you've, you know, used a scheduling software, try to make sure that you're on there for that hour when that post goes live, Mm. because that's the opportunity for those first few people who comment that you can do what I say, no comment left behind and actually respond to those comments and not just hearts and emojis. Um, A little ninja trick is to use four words or more when you're responding to comments so that you're actually having a conversation. And if you're having conversations in a DM, a direct message, uh, say in Instagram or Facebook, if you actually connect with people who are responding to your stories, that um, the algorithm will boost you up in their feed. So they'll always see you if you have that conversation. So it's the same thing as emails. Do you remember when we would say, please reply to this email. I read every single one. Yeah, yeah. And that and that tells the the email software of like, hey, this person's legit. They want to have a conversation. With yeah. Them. So it's the same thing in social okay. media. So it's like saying like, I'm legit. They trust me. They want to have a conversation with me. So it's going that extra mile and being able to respond inside those DMs the way that you obsessively did when it was inside the email inbox. Mm. Let's, and that makes total sense. I mean, again, like, let's be real, right? Like, let's be real people having real conversations and truly wanting to help versus just being like, I'm going to go out there and, and, and get you so I can, or get your attention so I can sell you something. Yeah. It's actually genuinely like having the conversation to literally help people, which is probably something we all should be doing anyway. Right. right? So, okay. So, and, and I get that, like, so con- having those conversations and are, are super important. Is there anything that you can give us that would help to, I guess, encourage people to leave comments or to talk, or is there anything that you do or that you've done in the past that's worked really well? Yeah. So something, um, if someone says they listen to a podcast episode, mm-hmm. um, I will take that conversation conversation a step further and say, what was your biggest insight or takeaway? So it's really like if you were having a conversation with someone in the bar and they said something to you mm. and then you just went silent, that would be awkward. So it's like, ha- like really just put your human hat on and like have a conversation. So that's one of my go-to questions, whether it's in a DM or on a comment and people will respond like, oh, so this was the part that I found most valuable. I I love sending audio messages and video messages inside the DM um, just to kind of give them that extra, like I'm a human, I'm really listening. And then we have a lot of back and forth conversation going. So it's you being willing to ask a question or at the end, of a post in your caption, you know, just giving a question that is easy to answer. So you don't want it to be super in depth, but like, you know, have you been to Puerto Rico before? Comment in the, you know, or where are you going? What are your summer vacation plans? Just giving them that friendly conversation to keep it going so that it is not one-sided. So ending your captions in a question where people can comment below and make it easy for them to respond or people love talking about themselves. So Mm -hmm. if you can really think about how can I shine the spotlight on them to share something that they're really passionate and excited about or something that they just consumed, like listening to a podcast of what did you find most valuable from that um, really, really helps keep the conversation going back and forth. Yeah, that makes total sense. I love that. Uh, Okay. And here's another thing I know people are going to say, they're going to say, well, Jada, I mean, you've had like thousands, hundreds of thousands of people I, I'm not going to be able to get that. And and like, what if I only have a few thousand or should I even be willing to do this if I can't have hundreds of thousands? So maybe you could address that. Yeah, no, I love that. And I always say that we all start at zero, yeah. zero followers, zero subscribers, zero money in the bank account, sometimes negative. Yeah. Like, I, I've definitely been there. Yep. I remember on my parenting blog, it was like my mom commenting, my cousin who didn't have kids. So just know that we all have to start from that place and there's Mm -hmm. going to be pivoting and testing along the way that you're going to have to figure stuff out. And I would say the biggest thing is to 
be uncomfortable or be comfortable with rejection and mm. silence and crickets because it's going to happen. Oh, we're, yeah. we're so afraid of people not responding to something that we don't say anything at all. And if you could get comfortable with that, like sometimes people won't respond, that doesn't mean that you should stop sharing and adding value. It just means I need to get more curious and learn about what actually resonates with my audience. So you have to be okay. Like if we think about like tennis, right? Um, I'm my my daughter's learning tennis right now and I'm terrible at it. And so it's just like, I'm, I'm not really hitting the ball anywhere. I'm just running after the ball the whole time. And I have to be okay with the discomfort of, I'm going to be chasing the ball around a lot until I get better at this so that we can serve back and forth. So really, really thinking about that I just want, if you can just know that, hey, sometimes people aren't going to respond and that's just information that that doesn't resonate and like look for something else until it clicks. And so I think that piece is really important. And then as far as the numbers, you know, I talk about uh, love over metrics. So rem- remembering the people, the beating hearts behind those numbers. When we start thinking about just the numbers, I think we can um, start to get off of track of what we're really trying to do. We're trying to make money for sure. Mm-hmm. But we're also trying to help as many people as possible. And so really thinking about how can I serve one person really well? Even like for me, when I speak on a stage, I make sure that I'm, I'm like, if I can change one person's life in this room, then that's all that matters. So I always come from the place of serving one person really well versus trying to to serve hundreds of thousands. And I never had the goal with Simple Green Smoothies to have hundreds of thousands of followers. I just wanted to make a living where I could support my family. So my recommendation is to actually ignore the numbers in the beginning stages. And with my personal brand, I have a multiple six-figure revenue in this business. And I have you know 6,000 followers on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I don't even look at my stats or my downloads for my podcast because it's still new. Like I just I think when we get too caught up in the numbers, especially in the beginning, it can distract us from actually creating valuable content because we'll use the numbers only to discourage us from taking action. Mm. I, I love the heartbeat behind the the subscriber, right? Like that's so awesome because it's so true. And if you were in a room with 10 people and you've seen everybody like watching you and listening to you and they were excited about what you were to share, you would be excited about that, that room full of 10 people. Yeah. But so many times we're like, oh, I've only got a hundred, right? right? <laughs> Put a hundred people in a room of beating hearts, right? Like, I love that. That is, that is awesome. And I love your love over metrics. I, I love that whole message and, um, and what you're, what you're doing there. Uh, so, okay, before we move on, cause I want to move into pivoting cause that's something that's happened to you. It's happened to me. It's going to continue to happen. We just ha- need to accept that it's not easy, but it's part of growth. Uh, but if, if we could give people like an idea, if, because again, I think you would agree, like not everyone's market is on Instagram, not everyone's markets on Facebook. Um, So once we figure out like what platform they're on, is there anything on Facebook that you would do differently than on Instagram or vice versa? Maybe you can give us a few things to think about for each platform to, uh, to kind of get the ball rolling and then keep momentum. Yeah. So I am a huge advocate of choosing one dance floor to begin Mm, with. Love it. Um, And as you kind of build and maybe you have a team that you can start to add those other channels. And the the first thing that you really want to think about is brainstorming a list of all the places where your people hang out Mm. online or even offline. I think we forget, you know, both you and I have brick and mortar backgrounds. Like we've started businesses in the brick and it's way harder because you have to pay lease right up front. Like money's going consistently, whether people are coming or not. Um, But really like brainstorming a list of where your people hang out. And if you don't know, start talking to people, interviewing them, asking them um, like where, so where do you, what magazines do you read? What blogs do you follow? Really just brainstorming a list of all the places places where they spend time online to learn or get more information. So that piece. Then the next thing, almost like you would brainstorm that in column one. Then in column two, brainstorm all the ways that you like to communicate 
to your audience. So are you someone that really, really likes to write? Uh, Do you prefer to speak and use your voice? So for you and I, we both like using our voices. So it's like podcasts, speaking on, you know, stages, um, being able to really use our voice and have that that energy. Um, For some people, it's going to be writing. And so Facebook would be a a better place, right? To kind of, Mm -hmm. if you wanted to use writing or something like Medium or LinkedIn, you know, but you really have to kind of create your own list of how do I like to communicate my message? And then the second part of that, putting like a little star next to what's the quickest way for me to get my message out of me? Because I can write, but it takes me 10 times longer than I can speak. For other people, it's the other way around. So thinking about what's the quickest way that I can get content out of me and then finding the sweet spot between where your people hang out and where you get the most lit up to express your message, your idea, um, communicate about your product and your service. And that's going to be the sweet spot and picking one of the the one in the middle to, to be your primary dance floor. And then park all the other names and platforms and other places, but just start sharing consistent content on that one platform and don't get distracted because <laughs> you mm-hmm. really have to, you really want to learn and not only just post, but also engage with other accounts as well is, is important, whether it's LinkedIn, whether it's Medium, like really engaging with other content creators as well helps boost uh, your presence online too. So showing up in Facebook groups, those type of things, being able and not like, Hey, come follow me over here, but just showing up consistently and adding value. Mm, Yeah. The one thing I love about you, Jada, is that you, number one, you demonstrate things, especially in person, like with your drawings, (laughs) (laughs) you have a lot of really cool, like ways to kind of break things out and, and these diagrams and stuff. So even you just describing that like piece of paper, write the heading, draw some lines, start writing. Um, I love that. And I think anyone listening right now should do that because you're so right. Like it's, it's for me, I don't like writing, uh, but I have a blog and I do have written content, but that is produced from the audio that I've created. Uh, and, and that's just, I like to get on and just kind of riff and kind of go through my stuff and then have someone else make it look pretty, uh, you know? And I think you and I are a lot of like, uh, in that way. Uh, but again, you have to, f- you have to figure out what works for you. And that doesn't mean you won't evolve like a video. I wasn't that good at video, uh, you know, years ago, but I've gotten better because I've done it. So it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means go to your, your strength right now, lean on that and then connect with people. And I, I think anyone can go out there and just add value by answering questions or being helpful in, in another group. And then people are going to naturally, they're going to look for you. They're going to be like, who is this Jada? Uh, I'm going to go check yeah. her out. And then they follow over to you. Then they get kind of into your world in, or on your dance floor, right? And then yeah. you get to you know, kind of bring them into to, to your world and, and your, your thinking and your strategy and your life. Like, because I think the other thing is people are starting to buy into us as people. And a lot of people say, well, someone, are, someone else already did the smoothie thing, so I can't do it. But that doesn't mean that you can't be yourself, right? And, and you're, you're unique in your own way. So... I just, I want people to understand just because someone else out there is producing content in your market does not mean that you can't show up and be you in your market. Yeah. And I love that you said that because I I say there are no unique messages, only unique messengers. Mm -hmm. And when we started Simple Green Smoothies, we were not the first people talking about green smoothies. Uh, I I remember going to those other people's accounts though. and And I talk about, you know, going OPT like check out other people's tribes to see what's, what the conversation is so that you can start to find actually your unique differentiator and not to, you don't necessarily need to create it. You just need to acknowledge like, Oh, here's how I'm different. So I'll give you an example with simple green smoothies. I remember there were, there were two uh, green smoothie sites, um, Victoria Butenko. And then I think it was like the green smoothie girl. And and they had tons of followers. They, you know, they were posting green smoothie recipes. They even had books, all of these things. And it's funny because after a while, then I started to see that they were emulating us and what we were doing nice. in our industry. But at that time, I used looking at like, well, how are they doing things? How are people um, responding to them on Facebook? And like, oh my gosh, they have so many followers. We have zero. And I just remember reading the comments to give me clues on how we could stand out in the marketplace. Mm. And the 
clues that I got, one was, okay, these women, they're a little bit older. Um, We have like a young creative artsy energy Mm -hmm. and the design isn't like that great. They're using stock photos. And so, you know, my business partner, amazing branding web designer was able to just build something that looked fresh and beautiful where you just wanted to just stay as long as possible. And with those green smoothie stock photos, it was just like glass, tall glass of green sludge. And I remember my first green smoothie. I was like, I don't want to drink this. And so I started to take photos on my iPhone with raw fruits and veggies to show the vibrant colors that went inside the blender. And it didn't seem so overwhelming. And also I remember reading in a comment, people were like, wait, a handful of what? How much is a handful? A pinch of this? What does that mean? And so we were actually the first ones to share exact measurements. Okay. One cup of spinach, two cups, of strawberries, one banana, one tablespoon of coconut oil. Like we were very specific because we knew that that was a block for a lot of people to take action. Mm -hmm. And so really, you know, using OPT, looking at the comments of people who are in your industry and seeing what is the gap in the marketplace and how can I be different? What, and also we weren't health nutritionists. I don't even have a college degree. Mm -hmm. So (laughs) I actually use that to our advantage that we're just two real moms wanting to get our kids to eat healthy food. We're not raw foodists. We're not hardcore yogis. We're not trying to, you know, have a green smoothie fast or anything. We just want to get our kids to eat their vegetables. Mm -hmm. And we ran with that as our unique differentiator. Mm, I love that so much. And it's, it's great because, you know, you could have compared and said, there's no way we can compete. And you didn't, and you pressed on and here we are. And uh, you've got a great story to share. So with that being said, you had everything going so awesome. And everyone would say you had a thriving business and it's still thriving. And then you decide that, I don't know if I really want to do this anymore. Yeah. I want to do that. <laughs> because I know that's what people are going to be uh, asking. I mean, I know the story, but I do want to hear about that because there's, there's a, a lot of times people are like, why wouldn't you just ride that? Why wouldn't? And when something doesn't feel like it's right for you at that moment, it's time to possibly rethink, but you've learned so much through that journey. That's obviously going to help you moving forward. But let's talk about that. What was that like? And, and why the, why the pivot? Yeah, it was really challenging. So, you know, you know, when we build businesses on our own, we can build our own golden handcuffs mm. <laughs> where, you know, just like leaving a nine to five, you can build a business um, that you no longer want to work for. Mm. And for me, what I started to notice was that I wasn't really passionate about green smoothies and, you know, the health benefits of chia seeds and all of that. Um, And here's a clue for anyone who's listening, go look at your bookshelf. Mm -hmm. And I want you to look at all the books that you've read and, and make note of all the books that you haven't read. Mm -hmm. And this is a huge clue because there's a should, like I should read this book versus of like, I want to like devour this book and and read more books like that. And I started to notice I, I had so many health and wellness, green smoothie, books and I never read a single one. Mm. And I was just devouring books about business, about building, you know, a lifestyle on your terms, you know, playing big, like four hour work week, a hundred dollar startup. Like that's what I love so much is actually building. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about like he loves the climb. Mm -hmm. Like I love the build. I love building things from nothing. And so it's like I built a community. I built a business. I built a team. And we were no longer building, we were maintaining and sustaining, which is where like a great COO should just come in and take over. Mm. And so for me, I was playing in a role where I was no longer being a creator. I also built a business where we were selling digital products. You know, we had our first uh, digital e-product launch. It was $86,000 in 10 days after focusing on building a community Mm. online first, Mm. right? Um, And you know, our one digital product ended up doing a million dollars in sales in two years, but I was selling digital products. I was posting the dance floor were beautiful photos on Instagram and Facebook and I wasn't using my voice, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, like I'm like, can we start a podcast about health and wellness or something? Right. Like I, I just wasn't being fully expressed. And, And my friend and mentor, Jonathan Fields says, he talks about product 
maker fit, right? We talk a lot about product market fit. Like what does the market want? And we pivot if like the market isn't buying something and I pivoted in my brick and mortar business and I left that business because I'm like, well, what the market wants, I don't want to deliver. (laughs) And same thing in Simple Green Smoothies, right? Like it's like, this isn't a fit for the maker, for me, the builder. And so it was really, really difficult and challenging to exit the company because it also opened the doors for me to talk on podcasts. It opened the doors for me to speak on stages in front of 3,000 people. Um, So it was creating a lot of opportunity for me to do the thing that I really, really wanted to do. And I had a lot of fear and hesitation in in leaving the company. I thought, you know, no one's ever going to invite me to be on their podcast again. No one's going to invite me to speak on their stages again. And, you know, everyone knows me as the green smoothie girl. And so that was so difficult and challenging because it was also my family's livelihood. Mm. And for me to make that leap, like it's just as if someone was leaving their nine to five. Like I had to recreate that all over again to like, well, how do I make money if I don't make it this way? And I remember asking, you know, Jonathan Fields, I'm like, am I crazy for leaving the company? And he said, you know, you're asking the wrong question. The question isn't like, are you crazy? It's, The question is, can magic strike twice? Mm. And he said, the answer is yes. And so that really did something to me of like, it's time. And and I will say that I wanted to leave many years earlier before I left in 2016, but it was also a timing thing. I'm a mom (laughs) and my husband quit his full-time job of 13 years because of the company I built. So now I really had to be intentional and strategic about how I left that company. And so on the side, every quarter, I would focus on projects that where I would be building my next business. I was trying on the next business that I want wanted to build while I was still getting my income from Simple Green Smoothie. So for anyone who's listening, really thinking about, you know, how can I start to test things? If you're thinking about making a pivot so that you just don't, you know, leap off into the black abyss, but that you actually start to try things on so you have a foundation to lean into. So when I exited Simple Green Smoothies, there was a buyout, but there was also revenue that I was already building by testing ideas and masterminds and two-day events here and six-week online program here to see what I actually enjoyed doing. And I just built a personal brand website and used placeholders. I just made things up of like, 90 minute call with me for $500, you know, really just trying different things on to see like, how do I want to serve next? And how do I want to create that, that revenue in this next iteration of my work? Yeah, no, I, I can totally relate. I mean, we've pivoted uh, a few different times, uh, you know, from uh, my wife and I having a photography business and then pivoting out of that into an online business, which was still in the photography field, but it was more of an online. And then from there, uh, pivoting into um, e-commerce and then taking everything we learned there and really kind of like hybrid, you know, created a hybrid of the two. And, you know, the podcast that, you know, you're on right now, The Amazing Seller was created because I was starting to sell e-commerce products, uh, you know, or online as far as like Amazon. And then that's what I started to be coined as. And mm-hmm. still to this day, you know, people that are listening are still, if they, you know, if they hear my name or like, oh, you know, he helps people on Amazon. It's probably, I think it's been almost two years now that the pivot has begun. And I let the audience know, and it's more of like, well, Scott has more to offer than that. And I've had more experience in the past with other businesses, not just e-commerce. And we're taking that, we're going to make it full circle. So I'm going to actually help you build a brand that's sustainable and that's future-proof because that's where I love to play. But it got me spotlight. So it's, it's part of the journey, right? It's like, that's what got people interested. And then from there, they buy into, you know, the type of person you are, what you're really trying to do. And then they start comparing it. Are you like all the other online gurus? I hate even using that word. (laughs) Be your own guru. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And so uh, I totally relate to that. It's scary because you're like, well, like, like your, your mentor said, does magic strike twice? And I believe it does. Cause it's, it struck for me a few times. Yeah. And it's like, but it's hard to let go because something's working, but you know that in your heart, it's not really, 
the right way because you're leading now. And when you're leading for me personally, like I need to believe in what I'm leading. And I'm not saying that Amazon's not a great platform because we still teach it, but there's got to be more to your business than just one channel. Like, you know, having all your eggs in one basket Yeah, really where I thrive. And I really thrive with just helping people get out of their own way. And, uh, and you know, the, and a lot of people say, Scott, I tune in just for the energy, just to get me kind of give me a little kick, kick in the butt and get moving. Um, so that's where I thrive. I know that's where you thrive, but it's so scary, right? Like yeah. when you make those pivots and you know, it's, to me, it's part of the journey. Yeah. And I love that you said like, it's, you've been in this like two year pivot, right? Oh, yeah. of trying to be known as the next thing. And, and, you know, we got a traditionally published book deal and there was a second one that, that came and I actually, wrote the book proposal. And I said, I I felt like I'm shopping for a house with my soon to be ex-husband because I knew I wasn't going to do that second book Mm -hmm. because my my friend, she was just like, you don't want to write a book about the thing that you don't want to be known for anymore. And I was like, oh, okay. I think it's time then. It takes time. I also want to make note of, you know, in, in this pivot, right, that I got to have a buyout, I, I got to transition. Not everyone has that privilege in the beginning. And so I just want you from my brick and mortar business to the parenting blog to Simple Green Smoothies, you know, instead of getting a buyout, I just, we stayed with my in-laws for six months. Right. So just like there's many ways to, yeah. to to do the leap. And I had two part-time jobs with a toddler daughter. And I just worked during nap times and bedtimes. And as soon as my husband came home from work, I was like, take her. I'm going to go to the coffee shop and work until super late at night. So when you're making those leaps, especially if you're a parent, I think it's important that we don't burn all of our income bridges, that we find ways mm. to make money, that we find ways. I did childcare swaps with people because they didn't have enough money to pay for childcare. So I, I just want to paint the picture because it's sexy for us, right? Sure. And we've had a business that had success and transitioning into another, we can buy ourselves time, but there could be some people who are just trying to make that first leap. And so I, I wanted to be transparent about um, that it's not always that easy to make the leap. And I've, I've been in the the struggle with the worst case scenario of, of living with the in-laws with a kid and, and your spouse. Yeah. And it's, it's funny because you, you talked about like working like on the side on something that could be, and I think that's really important. And a lot of people say, well, Scott, how much time should I dedicate? I don't have any time. Um, I I don't personally work well with that response because (laughs) I literally built a house from scratch with myself and my father. And I'm talking just about everything in the house while I was working 60 hours as a construction worker and when I was 25 years old. So I did that in 11 months on the side, built a house from scratch, 2,600 square foot house. Then my wife and I were running a photography business and then I was building my online business, staying up till one, two, three o'clock in the morning, and then getting up again at six to you know help with the kids and getting them off to school and all that stuff. So to me, it always does come down to why are you doing it? And are you willing to sacrifice the time and the effort right now for the reward of what could be in the future? And I think yeah. that's a big one for a lot of people is like, we're not sitting here saying like, it's going to be easy. You just make the switch and boom, it's going to work. You're like, you don't know, right? You're, you yeah. might be wasting some time in a sense, or just not even wasting time. You might be burning time to figure out what is, you know, the right move next. Yeah. And yeah. I think that timing piece, cause I thought I was like, for sure, I'm going to make six figures in six months. And I, I sold that to my husband, which was by me <laughs> for him to like watch <laughs> so when he got home, but it, you know, we got to the six months and I was like, Oh, we've got to leave this place that just increased the rent because we can't afford it. So, um, but I asked for more time. I was like, I'm studying, I'm learning, I'm figuring it out. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I need more time. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, is the secret weapon is I say, don't lower your ambition, just extend your timeline. Yeah, no, I I love it. I mean, gosh, we could talk for hours, but we do have to wrap this up. Um, This has been amazing. And for people listening, um, I hope you guys are cool with me going into the pivot because I think it's important that a lot of people, they don't talk about that. They just talk about where they're going right now, but there's going to come a time probably whether you're building an e-commerce business, an online digital business, like a brick and mortar, there's going to come a time that there will probably be a transition or we'd like to call a pivot of some kind. It might not be as drastic as ours, but you know, it could be, and just understand that it is normal. And, uh, it's just 
to me, it's part of, of the journey and you're learning and everything you're learning right now can be applied to what you're doing moving forward. Everything you learned with growing the first business helped you with the second the third, right? You just apply yes. those. It's, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it, it is simple if you break it down, right? Get attention in a market, deliver value, right? And then offer them what they want and what they need. Like it's, that is simple. It's harder than it sounds, but you, that is the process, right? And once yes. you learn how to get the attention, how to stay engaged, how to do an email follow-up, like how to connect on social, how to do maybe a, a podcast if that's what you're into. Um, but once you learn that stuff, you've got that. That's good. Yeah. And Scott, we have to confess too that you, when you make those pivots, even if you've had those businesses that you've built in the past, you will still have those beginner feelings of like, who am I? Yep. Who's going to listen to me? Where is everybody hanging out? Like all of, both of us have, have dealt with that. 100%. Like, just start, yeah. it feels like you're starting all over, but you have these layers of wisdom and experience that you're not having to figure out how to market and sell again. You're just figuring out like who your market is and how to best serve them in this new way. Yeah, no, this is awesome. Well, like I, I knew this was going to be a great conversation just because I like hanging out with you and jamming with you. So how can people learn more about what you're up to, Jada? Yeah, uh, well, I have a podcast, Lead With Love. Um, so that's a great place to start. If you're a podcast listener and you're listening right now, I think that would be a great way to get I to know. So. Yeah. <laughs> and for those who are curious of just how I, you know, built, you know, the the email list from zero to 355,000 email subscribers, I do have a freebie of how I did it, which was through online challenges. So if they go to buildyourchallenge.com, you can enter your name and your email and it's a whole checklist and roadmap of, of how we actually did it and how you can do it too. Yeah. I love that. And that's one thing we didn't even mention was challenges. And again, that could be a whole nother episode, but yeah, yeah definitely go grab that because that there will uh, really jumpstart that growth of building the email list in a really cool way where people are getting value along the way, which is, is pretty sweet. And you are uh, also known for really being able to uh, effectively run challenges. So definitely check that out. Well, Jada, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. This has been awesome. And uh, we'll definitely have to get you back on though. We got more to talk about. But yes. Anyway, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate it. I know everyone's going to get a ton of value from this and uh, yeah, we'll definitely be in touch. Awesome. All right. So hopefully you are as fired up as I am. And I mean, do we agree? I, she is just awesome. Jada, I could sit down and talk to her for hours. She's just got a nice soft spokenness to her, but let me tell you something. She also knows how to do really good marketing, but in a really cool, loving way, get it lead with love. That's her saying, that's what she, that's what she leads by. And, uh, and she means it, but you can still go out there and create an amazing career for yourself or amazing business. You really truly can. And, uh, she has definitely opened my eyes to that because even though I've been through a lot of different, a lot of different changes or pivots, there's still always that feeling of like, what's next? What's next? And that's normal, but I'm learning that. And, uh, and she's learning it because uh, her and I have had some private conversations and we're just like, gosh, when is this ever going to stop? And uh, you know what? We don't really want it to stop internally. We really don't because we always want to be growing. We always want to be climbing. And uh, I think Tony Robbins said it and it was, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I truly, truly believe in that. So guys, if you want the show notes to this episode, head over to the amazing seller.com forward slash six 99. All right, go over there, grab those show notes and, uh, and just Really think about what she was saying here as far as going out there and building a community, building an audience around your brand, around inside of your market, around your business. You truly can do this. And if you can't, then you need to do a little bit of shifting in my opinion, you need to shift the focus a little bit and maybe even niche down a little bit. Uh, but you really do need to listen to what she said and take that and really put that into action. As we always say, take action. All right. So guys, before we do wrap up, I did want to give you a little friendly reminder that we are approaching, well, we're approaching Brand Accelerator Live, which is going to be happening here in September. But when you're listening to this, depending on when you're listening to this, if you're listening the day it's, it's out and that it's aired, well, that will be July 17th. And that is a Wednesday. Well, we are going to be raising the prices to Brand Accelerator Live on July 20th at 12 o'clock midnight, okay, 11.59 Eastern. So if you have not grabbed your ticket yet, you're going to want to do that. What we just talked about here on this episode, 
there's a lot of that discussion going to be happening and some teaching at Brand Accelerator Live. And uh, it's just going to be a lot of fun, but it's going to be a lot of learning and it's going to be actionable. You guys know that, right? It's going to be actionable because that's how I roll. I want you to walk away with an action plan, and that's why I've invited uh, Joel Bauer, who's also one of our one of our team members at TAS, and he is going to be the MC. But he's also really, really good at helping people get the most out of an event. And that is what he's going to be doing. So brandacceleratorlive.com, if you have not grabbed your ticket yet, if you're listening to this on the day that it airs, go over there, grab your ticket. If you're listening to this after the fact, head over anyway and grab a ticket because you are not going to want to miss this. You are going to want to be there in person at Brand Accelerator Live in Fort Worth, Texas in September. All right, so guys, that is it. That is going to wrap up this episode. As always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I am rooting for you. But you have to, you have to. Come on, say it with me. Say it loud. Say it proud. Take action. Have an awesome, amazing day. And I'll see you right back here on the next episode.